Hi, I'm Samuel Billito with Billito Services, and I am an expert in the process of shooting, grading, and mastering HDR video. Today, I'm talking about my experience testing the new crop of intermediate HDR reference displays. Recently, I got together with my friends at Paradox Post to test some HDR displays. We set up a test where we fed the same HDR signal to the Sony BVMX 300, the FSI XM310K, the Apple Pro Display XDR, my small HD OLED 22, and a loner Atomos Neon 24. So I'm here at Paradox Post doing a monitor test with a couple of reference displays. Let me show you what we've got. On the top left, we've got the Sony BVMX 300. Top right is the FSI XM310K. Bottom here, this is the Atomos Neon 24. This is the small HD OLED 22. And that is the Apple Pro Display XDR. I'm running the same SDI signal daily chain through all of them and controlling it all with content in Resolve to test out the different displays. What I wanted to share with you today is just my thoughts and impressions from that test. The price range between the master monitors and the new intermediate reference displays is pretty stark. And hands down, the BVMX 300 and XM310K were the most accurate. But like I mentioned in my previous video, I was incredibly impressed by the performance of the small HD OLED 22 when compared with the BVMX. And once we got the Neon dialed in, it too was a contender for an at-home or cheaply deployed workstation HDR reference. That said, the Apple Pro Display XDR showed less haloing than the Neon, though the Pro Display XDR's size and fragility makes it a difficult display to move to set. It's also a pain to switch modes on the Pro Display XDR, and it needs to run in P3PQ to get the best HDR image. Don't use the Rec 2020 mode at this time. The Pro Display is a fine display to use in the studio when shooting, but it's not built to be taken on location, especially in a more rugged environment. The biggest takeaway that I had from our test is that finally, after working in HDR for about six years now, quality HDR is finally getting affordable enough for the independent market. I was impressed by all three of the displays we tested, and I can easily recommend each of them to you depending on your price range and your specific shooting needs. While the Small HD has the highest price point of the intermediate displays we tested, it was the closest image to the master reference displays. Its image quality really is that much better than the others. But we're comparing great to phenomenal in this case. So don't be afraid to invest in either of the smaller price point displays if you're just getting started in HDR. You'll notice that absent from our testing is any LMCL LCD displays. Sony has recently introduced two that I really wanted to test, the Sony PVM-X2400 and the X1800 that use LMCL panels, but we were unable to secure a loaner for our tests. My experience with LMCLs on the larger display sizes has been that the ghosting is immensely frustrating when grading or doing graphics work. But I still want to test this on the smaller displays, since the small display size means that they're less likely to show as much ghosting at the hard contrast edges. If you have any questions about my experience testing these displays, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more tips, tricks, and tools for working in HDR. Until next time, I'm Sam Bilodeau, and I'll see you soon.